Well, I certainly hope you all enjoyed our introductory uh, seven and a half minute video about where Tana Island is and some of the history. Tana Island is one of the most unique places in the world, and I just call this short segment Tana Island Different. You see that these uh, Melanesian people can have hair that's blonde and woolly, or uh, red and woolly, or dark and woolly. Uh, you see some with uh, little pigtails and blonde or reddish hair. You see some that are fair-skinned and some are darker, some more woolly than others. Uh, some even woollier and blonder than the rest. This is how you use the bathroom in Tana if you're lucky. There are people on Tana who worship Americans and have fake army drills thinking that someday people from the United States are going to bring all their worldly goods on ships such as jeeps and refrigerators and radios like they saw in World War II. They have mock uh, bayonets and even build mock airplanes out of cardboard and uh, frame wood that they leave out in the middle of large open spaces uh, thinking they'll draw Americans and Westerners back to their island. There's even one uh, group that worships Prince Philip who came to Vanuatu in 1974. This is how native man dresses. Um, and uh, you see that uh, they live, even uh, those who live in different villages and have different worship patterns still live in the same type of reed wall houses. This is the Yakel tribe who's shown on the Amazon Prime video about Tana. Uh, and I encourage you to watch that if you want to get a feel for how the Tannies lived up until the um, mid-20th uh, century. These uh, people lived just as they did in the Stone Age with no modern tools, and they put on shows for any tourists that come by for a certain amount of money. This is a normal kitchen in Vanuatu, and I've had many meals on Tana Island cooked just like this over an open fire indoors inside of a reed house, just like that Prince Philip cult uh, member with the British flag stood outside of. When they serve you fish, it's whole, and if you're fortunate, they'll buy rice before you come to cook it, or we tend to bring our own and uh, offer some to the village as a thanks and gratitude for their hospitality. Or some of the young men will go out and get you lobsters that, uh, or make you donuts in an earth oven, just like this, and they are good. The kids love watching my iPad even from six or eight feet away and watching American cartoon movies. And this is what you would call a school jungle gym on Tana Island at a primary school. Sometimes the best taxi to the airport is a tractor and a trailer. And you see the following that we have uh, just taking our uh, final bags to the airport. And our uh, courier takes us and drops us off there. You see to the left, uh, Ali Moak, Jack, my native father. He is the Natupinus or the witch doctor of the island of Lon or the uh, area of Lonangi and White Sands. Uh, he adopted me uh, and wanted me to come back to Tana after a couple of years of absence. Pray for him. He is still uh, lost in sin and darkness, and he knows it. This is how the ladies uh, make the old Moo Moo Presbyterian Island dresses, and this is our crew from 2012 that went. Uh, those dresses don't get pulled out very often. You see that even a one- or two-year-old child can play with knives, and that this little boy is breaking all the rules at one time. He is running with a knife, running with a stick, kicking a ball and sliding, and he did not poke his eye out or stick himself in the throat or any of the things that our mothers threaten us with when we're little boys. One of the worst things that's ever happened in the South Pacific and the greatest tragedy uh, weather-wise ever documented is Cyclone Pam in 2015. Cyclone Pam was the lowest pressure front and the largest storm ever recorded in the South Pacific with the lowest barometric pressure. It sat over Tana Island. The eye sat for four hours, and the storm covered Tana Island for 11 to 13 hours nonstop with winds uh, up to 180 kilometers an hour. You see that trees that had formerly been green and lush are now destroyed or broken in pieces. And an island that's normally verdant and green is dark and brown and sparse. You can imagine the sound and the wind that would it would have taken and the storm surge of 25 feet that tore roads with boulders the size of uh, small cars apart. And it's taken them years to recover. You see that uh, their villages look much like ghost towns or like horror movies or like what would be a there after an atom bomb went off, as one person described it. Pastor Will Thompson and I went in emergently two weeks after the storm as quickly as we could get there, chartered a plane, and took in large volumes of 
food and supplies and donations for them so that they did not starve with no food and all of their fruit trees uh, destroyed, all of their gardens destroyed, and no uh, means other than donations of uh, eating at the time. Uh, this is Allie Moke in the back seat that I just mentioned. Um, and Marceline, who's the daughter of Ruth, who's been our faithful nurse translator for years. Marceline has become one of our great helpers. And uh, we took them on the cargo plane that we chartered uh, back to Tana with uh, many supplies that had been bought with the help of missionary Danny White and stored for the time that uh, they would need them and divide them up amongst their villages. Uh, you see Pastor Thompson walking underneath a huge banyan tree that had been felled and uh, the the commercial chainsaws that we donated with uh, $7,000 donated just for chainsaws had been used to cut our way uh, down to Lonangi, the home village that I work in with my wife Carrie. You see that our home village was completely destroyed and uh, that many of the villages that we work in were demolished. Ruth was proud of her kitchen because it was something she had built herself with her husband Fred and it was completely leveled by this storm. Uh, we walked uh, many kilometers to uh, a village that uh, had formerly looked like this. You see the two graves with the uh, stone coverings, the cement coverings, and that village uh, where Pule once lived, Lahi's mother, uh, who I've served for many years with knee injections and uh, Rosefin injections, uh, was completely demolished. Uh, the home village that, uh, of Lonangi that Carrie and I work in normally looks like this, and it has returned now in 2019 to its former appearance. You see that it looked like that uh, two weeks after Pam. Children, because of all the fires and all the wood that was down, frequently were burned, and we had lots of burn victims that I cared for. Uh, thankfully, only a few of them were third degree, and no one died of burns. Uh, you see that uh, coconut limbs were flying, and the, the products of coconut trees so fast, uh, 180 kilometers an hour, that there were people impaled by them, and I did surgery on this young man laying on the floor of the small house that we work out of and that the natives have given to Carrie and I for the work of the ministry there. You see this young boy did feel better once we took care of him. Uh, in 2015 in July, three months after uh, Brother uh, Thompson and I went, I took a group of college students and several of my own children and Carrie, my wife, and we chartered another plane and filled it up with cargo and supplies and medicine to take to them and did the first vacation Bible school that they said had ever been performed on Tana that they knew of by Baptist in White Sands. You see that uh, the tree uh, that had been one of the trees that had been stripped was still stripped, but you could see some of the green coming back, and this is my son Caleb with his GoPro camera that he loves dearly. Emily sits under a tree in 2012. It's a large mango tree, and you can see that Marceline sits under the same tree just uh, three years later, and it's nearly completely destroyed uh, in the village of Imanaka. When we went back um, in 2018, they had rebuilt the village. Things were returning. This is a 2015 picture with my son and his future wife, uh, Sam and Ashley. And then uh, you can see Caleb standing there with one of the healthier-looking dogs. The bridge had been watched out to go uh, from Tabacow, uh, the main uh, ministry area, to Lonangi. And uh, you see Marcel and Ali Moak there in the back of the truck with us. We were just thankful to be able to ride down the mountain instead of having to walk that uh, three kilometers. When I went back in 2018, uh, the island was green and lush again. People had rebuilt their uh, villages and their houses. Uh, the uh, beach was overrun even though the uh, bridges and the roads were washed out. The greenery had recovered and the villages uh, had started to have their taro crops restored. And even the little bench that uh, we had had for our house, which thankfully was one of the very few buildings that wasn't destroyed by Tana on the island. By the way, 95% of the buildings were destroyed. Uh, we had a little bench that they built for us, and Carrie and I sat, thankfully, able to enjoy uh, our little back porch again. Uh, one man was so excited about the, the recovery of Tana that he asked me to take a picture of him and his pig and bring it back to him. And this is a healthy Razorback hog. You can see why I think it's providential that an Arkansas Razorback fan was the one that they asked to come back and give their own road to Tana. Tana is a beautiful place, and at 4.59 a.m. Uh, in January of 2018, I was thankful to be back and see that the island had fully recovered and that the people were um, uh, still wanting to hear about the truth of the Lord and uh, the truth that people that love them and bring medicine also bring to them, not only for their temporary health, but for their eternal life as well. Thank you for watching this other brief video, and we'll get to more uh, in the next installments. Thank you.